Hi, welcome to the Engineering Tools tutorial of CBUSH Connect Points. So to demonstrate this script, I have a model of a wing here. As you can see, it's only uh, has plate elements in it at the moment. And we do have a point cloud like this representing where the fasteners should go. This was based this point cloud was based on the CAD model which was then used to make the mesh and there should be a node at each point but that's not necessary for the script you can work just from the point cloud. So let me show you how these points look. Let's zoom in on an area here. As you can see we've got some here that are single shear and some here in this other plane that are multi-layers. The script can handle uh, multiple layers, so that's not a problem. Here we go to connect, uh, CBUSH connect points, and you have some options. So one of the most important parameters that you need to put in is the max grip length. And what, what the max grip length is all about is what's the distance, the maximum distance you expect between these fasteners. And that's relative to this pitch. So that helps the script, based on the point's relative position, say these three should all be in a fastener, but these three are a different fastener because it's larger than the match grip, max grip length. So the grip length should be much less than the pitch in typical models. So that's how the script will identify this is one fastener, this is another fastener, this is another fastener. And if you put it too small, you may get, say, these two, but not this one. So you want to put something appropriate in here. For right now, I'll just, say, draw the line for visualization. And I'm going to start the fa at fastener, I don't know, 51. You can start it at any one. Typically, we start it at one. But if you already have fasteners in the model, you can start whatever you want. So I'll hit OK. I'll select these three points. And it's going to draw a line. Let me turn on lines. And let me turn on labels and turn off the points. So here you can see it labeled it fastener 51. So that's great for visualization um, where, where the fasteners are. Let me delete that and we'll go batch them all. So turn the points back on, turn the labels off. Let's run the tool. Let's say make CBUSH and draw lines. We'll do series and parallel springs. We'll start at uh, I don't know, at uh, 85, whatever. Zoom out, let's get all these points. So now it built the fastener list. Uh, well, it collected all the point data. Now it's building the fastener list. And this is going through and getting, you know, which points are comprised of each fastener based on their relative position and the grip length that you entered. All right, now it's finished that. It's sorted by next closest. <clears throat> and so what next sort by next closest is when you have a group of points that you say, okay, this is part of fastener 51, you need to figure out what order they are. So what the script will do is it'll say, okay, what are all these points? And what are the two points that are furthest away from each other? What are the extrema? So then we grab one of those and we say, okay, from one of the extrema, what's the next next closest point and then from that what's the next closest point from that what's the next closest point so that's how we build up the structure of the fastener within the script so all the fasteners are built let's turn off the points and turn on the lines for visualization so looks like pretty nice we have um, we don't have any going crazy we had a pretty good point cloud here so let me turn on the numbering and we can say okay here's fastener 837 so if I scroll over there, let's look for 837. And there it is. So at first, when I was zoomed out, it looked like single shear, but it's not single shear. It has three layers. You can tell by the tree. So this is fastener 837, layer 1 to 2. Layer 1 to 3, that's the parallel spring. And then another series spring from layer 2 to 3. So there's fastener 837. We can zoom out here, let's check another one, so let's say 851, so here's fastener 851, so there it is, great. 
So that's the, the basic functionality of the tool. Now, these lines are just for visualization. Let me turn on the sea bushes. Let's, let's hide the plates. Um, so like I said, it just works with the point cloud. So right now there's um, duplicate nodes at each of these locations. So what I want to do is bring everything back in the model. Let's do tools, check coincident nodes. I'll just do select all. And we'll say, and I want to keep the higher ID but move to the lower ID. Let's preview this and see what it looks like. So that looks pretty good. That looks like where I have all these fasteners. That's great. Now, if you remember, when I ran the tool in the GUI, there was kind of a dummy variable, uh, dummy inputs for the stiffnesses here. You can put um, any numbers that you want for these. If you have, if you do smaller batches, you can say all oh, these are one fastener and I know the idealization. So in this case, I didn't know. So I just have a million in there. And, but I, we have another tool that I'll show you just quickly, um, CBUSH forces to Excel. And we don't have any forces because we didn't run the model yet, but we don't want to, we can just uncheck process loads. And let's say get all CBUSH data for all CBUSH in this model. I'm going to hit okay and it's going to run and it's going to bring our results over to Excel. And what we're hoping to get from, from that model is, is this is this stuff here so we have 1894 seabush elements and we want to get the modulus and the thickness for each layer where these seabush are and that will help us uh, set appropriate properties for all these seabush and we can do that in batch um, but usually a function of what the stiffness should be uh, depends on what it's connected to. So we need to get that data. And there's a, we have an easy way to do it. It's a CBUSH forces to Excel. Looks like it's uh, about a third of the way done. So I'm going to pause the video and let that finish running. All right, the script just finished here and it's blinking Excel for us to come look at. Um, here you can see we don't have any forces because we haven't run the model yet. But this is what we really want, the CBUSH data. So one thing I noticed right off the bat is we don't have any orientation. So I'll show you how to fix that. There's a nice uh, companion script that you might want. Uh, but here, this is really what we want. So for any fastener, let's say we want to look at 542. So, okay, here's fastener 542. It has these stiffnesses that we input at the beginning of the GUI, but this is the the important stuff. So probably we want to adjust those fastener stiffnesses and we can say that on node one we have this modulus and this thickness and at node two we have this modulus and this thickness and here's node one and node two. So and here's the property ID. So based on this and knowing what the fastener is then you can come up with the appropriate stiffnesses based on your program requirements. So we have all that data. Uh, for for all the for all of them, I'm going to close this out. I wanted to just show you element Seabush set orientation perpendicular. So this is how we set up the orientation for the Seabush. I'll just go ahead select all, and boom, now we're done. And they have uh, proper orientations also. So that's an optional extra script. It's included in engineering tools. Lots of great tools in in this toolbox. So check them out. Thanks for watching.